So I've been doing a bit of work on the workbench. I've been working on these two repeater systems right here. These repeaters are a little bit different than the normal repeater that you'd run into. In fact, these repeaters are pretty much one of a kind in Australia as far as amateur radio repeaters are concerned. I don't think there's any other amateur repeaters that are exactly the same as this. So what makes them so different? Come over to the workbench and let's have a look. These are an Australian repeater, which are very popular. These are called Unilab. These are the repeater of choice that I like to use. They're easy to get hold of. Well, kind of easy to get hold of, but they are an older model. They're, I think these were made around about the 90s, but they are fantastic. They are bulletproof and they come in these module. They're like kind of modular like this. So this is the receiver here on the left-hand side. They've got a control board. They've got an exciter module and a PA module. So basically, I usually remove this control board out of the middle here because it's not really needed, but in this case with these two, I've left them in. What I'm doing at the moment, and I've already done it with this particular one, is I am setting this up with the All-Star Asterisk Voter system, which is sitting over here. So if you do a search for um, All-Star Voter RTCM, that's the other... Um, a version of this which is in a surface mount version of this but basically I built this board up and what it is is it is a repeater controller that's controlled by All-Star so um, under the desk here I've got some Raspberry Pi's so that Raspberry Pi there is running All-Star uh, an All-Star node and what this is is this is a voting and simulcasting controller so basically what happens is it connects to my network uh, it connects to that controller it connects to a GPS, which sits here underneath the um, underneath the box there. And you input GPS data into here. This then is uh, has timing and all sorts of things. And the audio is routed through here to the All-Star controller. And you can have multiple of these. So I've got one here, I've got one there, and I've got another one in a rack here. And basically that means that you can have more than one site that votes votes between which one's got the strongest signal. So I can have multiple repeaters on different sites, on different mountains. And then what happens is, is whoever's using the repeater, uh, it will automatically choose which one has the strongest signal. Now, in addition to that, I've got this board over here, which is a frequency reference board. So these boards will actually do simulcasting. Now, what simulcasting is, is it means that it is sending the audio out of the Raspberry Pi All-Star Link controller to that board, that board, and the other board all at the same time, timed through GPS over the internet, which is pretty cool. And what that means is that I can transmit the exact same audio to all three repeaters on the same frequency at the same time, which is pretty cool because it means you can have one big massive repeater system that votes between which one's receiving the best and you'll also be able to transmit all on the same frequency. So it means that the end user who might be driving around in their vehicle doesn't even know that they're out of coverage of one repeater and moving into the coverage of another repeater because it's seamless. So that's pretty cool. So what this board does is this board, uh, this is a 9.6 megahertz crystal oscillator oven that is connected to this board to make sure that the frequency reference of this board is the same as the frequency uh, references that board and that one so that they're all on the same frequency because if they are different, then you um, get all sorts of problems with drifting and audio, the phase drifts in and out and it sounds all nasty and teary and, uh, when you listen to the FM signal. So that's what that's for. Uh, it's also driven by a 10 megahertz reference input in here from the GPS. So the GPS provides the timing data for this board plus the reference for that board. And then the radios also need to be frequency referenced. And in this case, um, they're GPS locked. So you can see here, I've got an external GPS coming in through here, through that white cable in the back here and just input it onto the board. They do have these uh, temperature compensated crystal oscillators, but they're not really that good. They're not that accurate. They do drift. So to stop that, we lock all of the repeaters together to the same frequency reference. So in this case, it's 10 megahertz. Um, originally it was 12. So what I do is we sort of hack the channel firmware programming um, in, the, 
in the uh, in the radio so that it works on 10 megahertz. So that's what I've been doing here anyway. I've been uh, this this one's not connected up to up to a, um, this board yet. I've, I'm just going to be doing that next. But this one's already been done. So I changed the frequency reference of that. And then what happens is is we take out of the receiver we take discriminator audio. So that's just basically white noise straight out of the out of the um, receiver with no filtering whatsoever. That goes into the voter or each of the voters. And then that way it can determine from just pure noise which one has the strongest signal. And then it outputs audio back um, directly into the top of the modulator here in the, um, in the transmitter exciter. The other thing we have to do is we have to do that after all the filtering. So there's all this filtering in here when it's used as a normal repeater. We don't want to use that because the problem is, is if, that if this is set up differently to that one, then the audios will sound funny and they'll sound yeah the phase will shift in and out and it does not sound very good at all when you're in range of both repeaters so we bypass all of that and basically this board then limits the amount of deviation that we can um, go up to so that we um, comply with all of the relevant um, legal things that we need to with as far as um, emissions. I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I kind of have forgotten what I've done but it's been a good learning exercise going over this stuff again. Um, I've got a link on my website actually about more about how the theory of this works. If you're interested in that, then I'll put a link in the description below. Still a little bit to go. I'm gonna be mounting it in a rack up in uh, the shed. Gonna be putting it up on the repeater site soon. So I might uh, do a video of that as well. If you really did enjoy this video and you like to see more of these technical type um, videos that I've been doing lately, I did the antenna video and I've also um, done a couple of other build videos as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because you'll get some more of those I'm not even looking in the camera. <laughs> Why am I looking up here? I had to cut that bit out because I wasn't looking at the camera properly But I am now then please subscribe to my channel because I really appreciate it And it helps me a lot and also helps others to learn more about amateur radio as well But for now, I've done some other videos on repeaters check them out over here Follow me over there. Give me a like 73. See you next time